Hi friends, in this video, we are going to see inverse Z transform through various problems. So let's take a problem. We have to obtain inverse Z transform. Problem is this x of z equal to 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse 1, 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse. Thing is that here ROC is also mentioned. So ROC is mod z greater than 1 by 2. Let's simplify this. That means all z inverse will convert into a z like this. Two z minus one upon two z plus one. So x of z we are getting as 2z minus 1 upon 2z plus 1. We'll do one thing since it's the linear factor, hence we will do the partial fraction of this term. So what I have done over here, I have increased the degree of numerator by 1 having this z. So that we have to do a partial fraction of this. So if we do that, 2z minus 1 upon 2z plus 1 into z will have the partial fractions as a upon z plus b upon 2z plus 1. So a we obtain from this by putting z equal to 0 which is nothing but 2 into 0 minus 1 upon 2 into 0 plus 1. So finally a is minus 1 and we obtain b from the same transfer function by putting z equal to minus 1 by 2 which is 2 into minus 1 by 2 minus 1 upon minus 1 by 2 so i'll get over here minus 1 minus 1 upon minus 1 by 2 so after simplifying i will get b as 4. So now x of z by z will be minus 1 by z plus 4 by 2z plus 1. So let's take this z this side so that x of z will be minus z by z plus 4z upon 2z plus 1. Z z get cancelled. X of z will be minus 1 plus 4z. I will take 2z common. I will get over 1 plus 1 by 2z. This z get cancelled. Here I will get 2. So in the end x of z will have the form minus 1 plus 2 upon 1 plus 1 by 2 z inverse. So for this we need to find out the inverse z transform with the ROC mod z greater than 1 by 2. So we will have the pole 0 plot which is very simple over here. Have a pole at z equal to minus 1 by 2. So that and one more pole at the origin. But that is not required only because that we have just taken for the partial fraction purpose. So this is mod z equal to 1 by 2 and uh, ROC they asked the region outside this circle. 
so it's quite obvious using the inverse z transform thing is that what is the inverse z transform of a constant it is very simple any constant z transform laplace transform or fourier transform will always be a constant and that nothing but a delta function so delta n z transform is 1 and vice versa i can say inverse z transform of 1 is also a delta so in the end x of n will be minus delta n over here it's a 2 since it's outside the circle that means it will have the term u of n so it's a minus 1 by 2 because of this raised to n u of n this is the answer we will get so what is the new over here if a constant is there then it inverse that transform is always a, a delta function let's solve one more problem of inverse that transform so problem statement is this determine the inverse z transform and x of z is given as z square plus z upon z square minus 2z plus 1 and ROC is mentioned as mod z has to be greater than 1. Now this x of z is actually given as z I take common z plus 1 and if you see properly it is nothing but z minus 1 the whole square. Normal practice is we always have x of z by z for the partial fraction purpose. Here also we are going to do the same thing. It's a linear factors but repeat it. So z plus 1 upon z minus 1 square will have two factors one with a non repeated root and second with a repeated root. Now this cannot be solved by residues directly because there are repeated roots. So whenever such situation comes, how to deal with? So what we will do? Left hand side will remain as it is, but on the right, we will take a LCM of these two, which is nothing but z minus one the whole square. And for the a, one z minus one is missing, so we will multiply. But for b, already the term is present so we will keep b as it is this ratio will be equal if its numerator is same so just equating the numerator you will get this expression and by putting the values of z which will make one of the constant zero we will get another constant so here by putting z equal to one we will get p as two for second constant, we put z at a random value, I put 0, so it will be like this, already b is 2, so it's a 1 minus a plus 2, this implies a equal to 1. So in the end, z plus 1 upon z minus 1 the whole square is nothing but 1 upon z minus 1. 2 upon z minus 1 the whole square and that is nothing but x of z by z so in the end x of z by z equal to 1 upon z minus 1 plus 2 upon z minus 1 square taking this z on the right hand side so z upon z minus 1 plus 2 z upon z minus 1 square so inverse z transform of this will be x of n inverse z transform of 
z upon z minus 1 plus 2 into inverse z transform of z upon z minus 1 square. So, this we already know because it's just like a z upon z minus a is basically u of n. So, I can say inverse z transform of z upon z minus 1 is nothing but u of n straight away equation number 1. But for this we need to be act smart because just by looking over here it comes around to be a derivative of this term with a z. So, what I will do? I will just give a thought and find out what will be this term. So, it is a minus z, z minus 1, derivative of z is 1, minus z, derivative of z minus 1 is 1 minus 0, whole divided by z minus 1 square. So, continuing to this, we can say this is minus z bracket z minus 1 minus z upon z minus 1 square. So, minus z d by dz of z upon z minus 1 is nothing but minus z into minus 1 upon z minus 1 square. So, minus z derivative of z upon z minus 1 is nothing but z upon z minus 1 square. Now, the question is why I have taken this? Because this is nothing but minus z d by dz it is a z transform of u of n which is z upon z minus 1 and that is nothing but a z transform of n u of n. So, basically it is a differentiation in z domain property. So, u of n z transform derivative multiplied with the minus z is nothing but multiplication of n with u of n. So, now I can say inverse z transform of z upon z minus 1 square is nothing but n u of n. So, what we get is this term. So, if I substitute 1 and 2, what I will get finally x of n as u of n plus 2 constant is that n u of n. And finally, simplification of this will give us n plus 2 u of n. And since it is just a u of n, that means ROC condition is also getting satisfied. And the ROC over here is mod z greater than 1. So, we have seen whenever there are repeated factors, how to deal with it. Thank you.